Hi, my name is John. I work for um, Aramid Health Group. Um, we're just situated just down the end of the road there in the Trinity Enterprise campus. And I've been working there since August 2011. So I suppose how my career uh, went up until up until I, I started in Aramid. Uh, well, I went to school for a start. I went uh, and started in NUI Maynooth in between 2003 and 2007 and did a degree in biological sciences. And then I was lucky to get an opportunity to do a PhD in the medical mycology unit uh, in NUI Maynooth. And from 2011 until now, I've been working with Aramid Health Group. So you're probably looking at this going, okay, what's the connection? Well, I suppose what you probably got from a lot of people here this evening is that the area that you start out in is not necessarily the area where you end up in. And when I was doing my PhD, the particular area that we were looking at was a fungus called Aspergillus fumigatus. And uh, the fungus, that, that particular fungus, it can infect your, your, your uh, airways. Um, and if you're particularly unlucky and you have uh, cavities in your lung, that horrible big ball in the cross section of someone's lung is a fungal ball. And that can have devastating consequences and be fatal. How you tackle that uh, is the neutrophil, so cartoon demonstration of that there. But the thing in the top of the top left hand corner was this thing called the, the wax moth larvae that we used as a model to um, test the virulence of different fungal strains. And so you probably think, okay, where is this all going? But the thing is, is that what I started out with there, I didn't necessarily, I'm, I'm certainly not doing anything in that area now, but the techniques I picked up are, to, are relevant to what I'm doing today and how to interpret the particular data that I find on a daily basis, I received my grounding there. So, as I, get, as I said, it, it all comes down to what uh, background you have and not limiting yourself to particular areas because what I had would have uh, more or less gone down an academic route only, and that's the particular fungus. So, Aramid Health Group is just down the road here. What do we do? Well, we're involved in validation, commercialization, and certification. So, basically, if you are a company that has a product or a service that reduces a person's allergen exposure, so that could be bacteria, could be dust mite allergen, could be mold, in many cases, it's mold, could be an issue of ventilation. Uh, we can come in and we can test that particular product for its effectiveness at removing that. I mean, we, we roughly, all of us here, we spend about 90% of our time indoors. Um, and that's, that, 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 if you think about it, that, that's a fairly accurate enough uh, measurement. So if you're being routinely exposed to particular contaminants, that can have an awful effect on your health. And that can be an issue of asthma, occupational asthma in some cases. Uh, people, you know, you often hear of people complaining that their house is damp and they're sick as a result. Well, if you have a, if you have a product or services that, that reduces that, well then, uh, obviously, that it's, it's a particular... Um, particular benefit and we can do the, the product validation on that. We can monitor and for the control of these things we can do that out in the environment. That could be in a hospital, could be in homes and so on. Uh, what we've also moved into is doing research so we're trying to develop assays uh, to measure uh, contaminants. One of the things that we do is that we're the only uh, ISO 17025 accredited lab for dust mite allergen analysis which is a, a big feather in our cap. And another thing is the Health Friendly Air program. Uh, so that's indoor air quality monitoring. So that could be in labs, could be in homes, could be in offices. And it's a program that was set up and you'll see a little bit more of it. And I'm involved in the technical management of that as well as being the microbiology officer um, in Airmid. So just breeze through quickly. I, I suppose because we're a small company, I mean, there's only eight people in the lab and then you have uh, five five to seven people, the other two people uh, work part-time um, in the company. So I suppose what happens is that the, because we're small, we have a fairly good base of people that are, say in my case, my background is in mycology, you have Angela who's involved in virology, people that have backgrounds in bacteriology and immunology, and the head of our company is Bruce Mitchell who is, uh, he's actually a consultant immunologist in the Blackrock Clinic. So. I suppose it's all about bringing uh, all those different uh, subject areas together and being able to provide a service. Um, we are involved in research and development. And uh, what we do is, um, do, uh, part of what we do is environmental uh, chamber studies. So that particular big white unit there is where we do most of our product testing. 
I suppose the big thing is that as part of working in a small company, you're never really shoehorned into one particular job or position. Um, what I uh, what, what, what I found when I was initially taken on to do the job uh, that, I'm do, that was set out was just to be the microbiologist. But straight away, you're put into different areas. OK, well, what's your background in allergy studies? What's your scientific writing capabilities like? What's, uh, can you interpret data that you're not familiar with? So it's very important to be able to take that on. So one of the things that these things down here are bed bugs. So one of the things that, I'm in, that I help out in is, a pro is in several projects where we monitor um, products to be able to repel bed bugs. It's a big, it's a big uh, market area in the United States. Uh, I'll through that. The microlab, um, we test for antimicrobial uh, surface treatments and textile treatments. Again, this is an area that I wasn't particularly familiar with, but the important thing was to be able to take in the uh, the techniques and abilities to, to analyze different things that I picked up from my degree and my postgrad, and it's something that I'd say to anybody looking for a job, don't just look at what you have on paper, look at or, and think, okay, well, I'm only shoehorned into doing one particular position. Think of, well, is there other areas that you can apply yourself to? And certainly what I came out with, as the previous speaker was saying, a PhD is very, very specialized. Like my area was very, very specialized. But the important thing was that to be able to take what techniques and experience that I had from that and be able to apply it to something completely uh, new and different. So areas of product development, consultation, I had no idea of that, but you have to learn. And I suppose that's a good thing about working in a small company. And it's certainly been my experience is that you never, you never get caught in one particular area and you're, you're not ever left in one particular project for too long because we're so small and because we have a very large client base. You have to be able to, um, I suppose, adapt to that on a very regular basis. So as a result, no two days are the same. Uh, another area is the research and development, which I suppose is, a, is something that I suppose I can take on what I, I learned from, from before. Uh, where we're trying to develop diagnostic assays. Again, uh, part of what we do, because and I suppose it's something that's important to bear in mind if you're in a small company, is that you might be asked to develop a new project. And one of the things that we're trying to do at the moment is to develop new assays for detection of household allergens. So one of the things that we're trying to develop is a means of detecting high levels of dust mite allergen. And that can be a major, major problem for, um, for some people. And the means that which we're trying to uh, analyze it is bilateral flow. So basically, it's the principle that the pregnancy test works on. Um, now, the idea being that you'll get a color change and you'll be able to instantly detect uh, the particular allergen. Now, what we want to, what I, I'm and other a few other people in the company are at the early stages of doing is developing the um, the uh, analytes to raise antibodies to be able to develop a kit for this. And well, I suppose the thing where I suppose where it's different being a small company like ourselves is that you have a little bit more scope than you'd have in a larger company. In a larger company, you might be shoehorned into a particular job or a particular set of responsibilities. Whereas with the likes of ourselves, it's kind of a, a bit of a bridge between something that's quite academic in terms of that okay, you can develop certain projects. If you find something that is a particular use, you share that particular data, and you see, okay, well, is there something that we can develop that as, a, as a product or a service here? Um, but at the same time, you have the regimented end where you have particular tests to perform and so on. So I suppose uh, it does have its benefits. Another thing that um, I am involved with on a daily basis is the Health Friendly Air program. I mentioned it earlier on. As I said, people are exposed to allergens. And I suppose this is something where um, I was handed this particular brief on my fifth week in the job in uh, September 2011. And the first thing I thought was, holy crap, what am I going to do? I have no background in this. I don't know anything about a HVAC system. I don't know anything. I've never dealt with an environmental engineer before. But I had to learn. I had to learn very, very fast. And again, working with a small company, you have to learn very, very fast. Um, because the harsh reality is, is that I was the only one that had the nearest set of techniques and expertise to be able to interpret the data that we had. So I'd take what I had and went and applied it to this particular thing. And I had to learn on the job. I had to do courses on the side and everything else to get myself up to speed. 
But the reality is, is that the particular uh, service is thriving. We have a very good client base and we don't get any complaints about it at all. So the thing is, for me, it's very, very satisfying because as well as saying that you can produce data and you can produce maybe certain experiments that have worked very well, to be able to turn around and in my case, bring in clients and do client negotiation, which is something, I mean, if I want for a better term, I was a bit of a lab rat before I started in Nairman, but then all of a sudden I had to have some knowledge of how business worked. And certainly, working with a small company, there's a lot to be said because you get exposed to these things, and it certainly uh, leaves you a very, very rounded individual in terms of your career development. And uh, just to give an indication, that was when we took that photo, was last August, and we're only missing one person, so that gives you just an example of the fact that being in a small lab, um, you, t you get to take on a lot of different responsibilities, but certainly being part of a small team, you get to, to learn a lot and you get to pick up other people's techniques, which is only a great thing for your future career development as well. That's it. It varies. Um, at the moment, we uh, we don't have any graduate positions open at the moment. Having said that, uh, we had two positions open last year, which were filled. It depends. I mean, we're, we ourselves like we're 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 a growing company, thank God. Um, and by all means, positions we I would anticipate that they would open in the future. The other thing I would say to anybody. Uh, is if you're if you're an undergrad and maybe in your second or third year of whatever course you're doing whether it's science could be engineering whatever i would recommend um if you're going to do an internship i know people aren't fond of internships because you don't get paid but the reality is i mean i had to do it myself for a period of time you don't have to do it for that particularly long but i would advocate doing it in a small company because you get exposed to an awful lot of different techniques and experience um in a very, very short space of time. I know I keep on harping about having to broaden your set of skills and whatever, but certainly in a small company, it's worth considering it. And certainly in, in the time that we do start advertising again for positions, uh, people will come in and they'll get exposed to an awful lot of different things in a, in a short space of time. Uh, we're always open internships by all means send in a CV um, if people are interested in doing it we're only too happy to to bring people on their experience as I said like we're a growing company and um, I mean just by way of an example I mean you, you you hear of people doing the false internship scheme and people say oh well you know that's the end of the scheme once your position is finished well, that's not the case we've we, 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 we've uh, taken on two people from graduate level from the FOSS internship scheme and they're, they're fully paid employees now. We're quite proactive in that end. And again, as part of a small company, when you're a growing company, you can do that. And I mean, certainly by all means, if, if, you're, if it's something that you think you're interested in, have a look at our website here at healthgroup.com, look at the areas that we're in. Um, and by all means, yes, we'd be, we're always interested in speaking to motivated and driven people. And does your background have to always be microbiology? No, I mean, I did a microbiology degree and I or did a, a biology background, general biology background, and did a thing in microbiology. But I'm uh, going through stuff with dust mite halogen data. I'm the one that's trying to interpret data for indoor air quality monitoring. Just goes to show you, um, and I know I, I probably sound like a bit of a broken record here, but the one thing I, one that I suppose the big thing that I've learned in the last few years in terms of just starting out in the private sector is to take the experience that you have and look at what experience you have and look at other things in your life. What other things that you do in your life that are make you a more rounded individual and see, okay, well, what sort of jobs can I apply that to? I, mean, I, I don't know what your own background is in, but if you do think, it could be a company like Aram, it could be another company. There's a, there's a plethora of small and growing companies out there that are looking for driven people, people that are motivating, people that bring new ideas by all means put it out there. I suppose, I suppose one last thing I, I would say to anybody here, um, I was just talking to a few people out uh, in the pods there earlier on, don't just look at, the, at, at what you've done academically. Um, I think that's very, very important if you're out to start developing a career. Don't just look at that because if you've put that, just that kind of stuff down in your CV, it doesn't put you across as a very rounded individual. If you have other things going on in your life, maybe you're involved in a charitable organisation 
or you're involved in a particular sport, or you're involved in the or an organisation committee, make sure to put that down when you, you, when you are putting your CV out there. And if you do get caught for an interview, put these things across because it brings across that you're a more rounded individual, that maybe you're a team player. Like in my case, I was involved with a charity cycle in Minute, and this turned out to be the subject of a bit of chat for about what I thought was going to be five minutes and ended up being about 10 or 15 minutes talking about my role with a charity, with a student charity cycle. And one of the things I asked the guy when I did get the job, and he said to me, well, the thing that came across is that A, you had organisational ability, you had good interpersonal skills, you could communicate effectively, and you were decent. <laughs> that, that, that you weren't, you know, that, that you could be trusted and, you know, you're, you, you, you weren't a bad person be behind everything else. So I suppose to anybody here, whether people like yourselves who I don't know and anyone that I do know, I'd always say make sure to put that end of your experience out because it does it does really have its benefits and I mean I I before actually just between finishing the PhD working in Ermid I put out the different sports and different things that I did and by all means make sure to incorporate these things into your CV because people are looking companies and organizations are looking for rounded people people that they can get on with and people that are going to be good team players so I suppose as an aside from everything else there that'd be the one thing I would say as a general bit of advice when you're starting out.